Today I would like to discuss on pulp testing. Pulp testing is basically done to evaluate the responsiveness of pulp, for which we have several tests available. Various thermal tests and electric pulp testing on one hand and pulse oximetry and laser Doppler flowmetry on the other hand do evaluate the responsiveness of pulp based on different mechanisms. For suppose thermal test and electric pulp testing evaluate the subjective response of a pulp based on uh, the ability of a pulp to respond to stimuli that is basically they stimulate the pulpal sensory neurons. On the other hand laser Doppler flowmetry or pulse oximetry are those tests which objectively evaluate the vasculature of the pulp. So no matter what the test is, we try to basically understand the status of the pulp, whether it's normal or abnormal, whether uh, there is any condition such as pulpitis or not, or whether the pulp is necrotic. Unfortunately, the true status of the pulp can only be evaluated histologically and several studies have clearly shown that there is no good correlation between the objective signs and symptoms and the pulpal histologic status. So in spite of this fact, we evaluate or we try to perform these tests in order to move a step closer to diagnosis so that we can know the true status of the pulp more or less and then instill appropriate treatment protocol for the patient. So today I would like to discuss about thermal tests in detail. So thermal tests basically include heat test as well as cold test. So thermal tests, before going into the details, whether the stimuli can be either hot or cold. So in our day to day uh, life experience, we can clearly understand that the moment we take something which is hot or cold, we have a kind of sensation the moment there is stimuli. And that kind of sensation disappears or vanishes as soon as we uh, get rid of that stimulus or we remove that stimulus. So in a normal scenario, there is some kind of responsiveness to hot or cold which clearly indicates that a tooth is vital. But on the other hand, what if there is some kind of pulpal pathology and what if there is some kind of periapical pathology in a given tooth or in an offending tooth. In those abnormal cases, the moment we apply stimuli, it can be either hot or cold, there can be different kinds of responses. like. The moment we apply a stimuli, hot or cold, on an offending tooth, there can be no response or there can be excruciating pain which intensifies even after removal of stimulus. So different kinds of responses are seen when we perform these tests. So we need to have a brief understanding of these responses so that we can elicit our tests accordingly. So first I would like to discuss in detail about heat test and then I'll move on to the cold test. heat test. So when is this heat test performed exactly? Heat test is performed exactly in those cases where patient complains of pain especially while taking hot food or liquids. So in those cases we limit this test and this test mainly helps us to identify the offending tooth and it helps us to identify whether a tooth is normal or abnormal and doesn't give us the vitality status of a particular a given tooth. So this has to be kept in mind. Heat test doesn't help us to evaluate the vitality. It only gives us an idea whether the pulp is normal or abnormal. So after understanding this, we need to follow a specific protocol in order to perform heat test. As obvious, there are several materials available in order to perform heat test. It can be either hot water, heated gutta percha, impression compound, frictional heat generated by rubber discs, etc. So no matter which material or methodology you, we use, we need to follow a specific protocol in order to perform these tests. So first let's see what the protocol is. So if we want to perform heat test, if a patient complains of pain in lower right back tooth region that is in the fourth quadrant, then we need to start from the posterior most tooth in that particular quadrant and then move anteriorly. For which rubber dam isolation is mandatory and we need to isolate each tooth individually and wait for the response. 
as we move on from tooth to tooth if it's a normal tooth then there will be a normal sensation but if it's an offending tooth or a tooth of interest or target tooth then there can be spontaneous pain sometimes there can be delayed response in response to this heat test so that delayed response can be seen even after 10 seconds so it's always advisable to wait for at least 10 seconds before we move on to next of next tooth in question so this is how we perform heat test and for which we have different materials as I have discussed previously the first one being hot water so this is a plain water whose temperature is similar to that of either hot coffee or hot tea so we take an irrigating uh, irrigating syringe and then load it with this hot water and then extrude the liquid onto each tooth in question and then we will measure or gauge the response that is the subjective response accordingly and then we have various other materials available uh, for performing heat test it can be either heated gutta percha or an impression compound So either heated gutta percha or impression compound can be used to perform heat tests that are applied in the mid facial region of the tooth in question. No matter which test you perform, always keep in mind the fact that we need to test the adjacent as well as contralateral tooth in order to obtain a baseline data or baseline response to that particular patient. Care has to be taken before applying either heated gutta percha or impression compound because there is a tendency for these materials to stick onto the tooth. So for which we apply a layer of lubricating solution before applying these materials. And then we have frictional heat uh, where, wherein we can create frictional heat using rubber polishing cups. So rubber polishing cups which are rotated at very high speed in dry conditions on a dry tooth generate do generate some kind of friction leading to generation of heat based on which we can gauge the response accordingly so this test that is uh, rubber rubber cups so frictional heat generated by rubber cups this test is seldom used nowadays because we have other better materials to perform this heat test so this is in brief about heat test <music>